in, out, end of timeline. In, out, end of timeline. And that's basically your ultimate workflow in DaVinci Resolve 16, 17, whatever, and the only one that you will ever need to know. Now, why would you want to do this? Like if you're like me and you're cutting a lot of drone footage, then it's always good to a come home and review all your footage and then just take all the best bits, put them in a separate folder. So when you start working on your project, you know that every single clip that you have in your folder is good to go and you don't need to scrap through them anymore and find all the good parts. And B, if you're doing YouTube videos like these, then that is basically your workflow. You record yourself for 20 minutes and then you go through and you find all the bits that you want to use and you do in, out, end of timeline, in, out, end of timeline until you have a video like this. To perfect this workflow in DaVinci Resolve, there's about three things you need to know. One is how to properly import your footage. The second is a couple of keyboard shortcuts. Um, as a matter of fact, there are six keys that you need to learn but we'll just remember them as two keyboard shortcuts just to make it a little bit easier for you. And then lastly, as I mentioned before, if you're doing drone footage like I do, there's a really cool option in DaVinci Resolve that lets you individually export every single clip. Now let's take a look at how we do that. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Dan. I do video editing tutorials and drone how-to videos and all sorts of drone-related stuff. If that's the kind of stuff that you're into, consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps me out and you'll get fresh new content every single week. So now let's dive into DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so I've got DaVinci Resolve version 16.2 open here. And so the first thing you wanna do is import your footage. So let's take a look at what we need to look out for. So for starters, make sure that you are in the media workspace, media page, and then you wanna to navigate to where your footage is. So I've already done that. And if yours looks a little bit different, that's fine. Mm, but you wanna make sure that you see two important columns. One is the resolution and one is the FPS, the, the frames per, per second. Okay, if you don't see them, you can just right click anywhere up here and then you can just make sure to show these columns. Okay, and these columns are important because as you can see, we have two different resolutions here and we also have two different frame rates. Now, if I were to just drag all my footage into here, you can see that DaVinci is prompting me that, hey, the frame rate of the current project setting, which is just an empty project, Mm, it's different from the footage that I want to import here. So if I do and say change and then I hit shift nine on my keyboard, I can see that it's imported, uh, that it's set my project settings to 29.97 frames per second and it kept the timeline resolution at 1080p, which is also not correct. So we're going to change that and hit save. Now here is the problem. If I were to cut all my footage with DaVinci Resolve just like this, then I would lose half the frame rate on the 60 frames per second clips here on the 59.94 frames per second, just because it's a 29.97 timeline now. And if I were to export my clips, then I would lose half, half the frames on those um, 60 frames per second clips, which is not nice because 60 frames per second allows me to slow my footage down significantly. So what we want to do here is we want to make a bin for each of the categories. So we're going to have 4K, 60 frames per second. Those would be these clips here. Then we would make another bin, which would be 4K, 30 frames per second, which would be these clips here. And then there's one more, which is 2.7K at 60 frames per second. Okay. So, and then, and then you can simply sort by frame rate or whatever makes it easier for you. It depends on how your footage is shot. And then you just drag those into, those are your 30 frames per second clips. These are the 60, and this is the one different resolution. Okay. 
All right, let's get to the exciting part of actually cutting the footage. Um, to get started, I would just go into each of the folders, select the clips, right click, create a new timeline. So you can even name it that way so that it's easier for you to remember. Bam, create, and then double click the timeline. Now let's get on to the keyboard shortcuts. Mm, double clicking the timeline and doing this process this way does two things. Like A, it takes all the clips and puts them on the timeline and B, it moves you over to the edit page, which is actually not what we want. So let's head back over to the second page here, which is our cut page. And what I would do is just go Command A or Control A on your keyboard and then delete to get rid of all your clips. Now, I want to do that. It's because DaVinci Resolve has this amazing feature where you can head over to your source tape and you can see here there is two clips, right? Because we have two clips in our bucket associated with this timeline. So now let's get to the keyboard shortcuts. So to play, stop and reverse, you want to use L to play and then L again to speed up um, twice the speed, L again for four times the speed, and then L again for eight times the speed and so forth. And it's gonna make it pretty hard to actually follow what's going on. So usually more than four times is not very helpful. And then J reverses your footage. Again, if I keep tapping it, the faster it will get. And then K just stops it, right? So J to reverse, K to stop it and L to play forward. So that's basically our first keyboard shortcut category here. And now we want to use these three keys to just quickly go through our footage and see when interesting stuff is happening. So you can see here in the first couple of, in the first five seconds, I'm not even doing anything. There's not even any motion in the clip. I'm probably just setting up my footage. So. Once I notice that the drone is flying, I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard to send an in point. And now I'm just flying and flying and flying forward, so nothing spectacular happening here. So I wanna keep monitoring my footage until I think this is pretty good. The boat is just out of frame now. This is more than I need. And then I hit O to set an out point. And then you just hit P to put it on your timeline. So now you can see that your clip is down on the timeline and then you can just keep going with L. It just automatically goes to the next clip. And once again, you can see in the beginning, there's some jerky camera movement because I'm still figuring out what I'm actually want to record. And then I press I on my keyboard and I keep going and going and going until nothing interesting is happening anymore. And then I press K to stop and then O to set an out point and then P to add it to the timeline. This comes in especially handy if you have multiple clips on your timeline. Then you can just play your footage back at the original speed or maybe at twice the speed. And then all you need to do is like set an endpoint, watch your footage until you see interesting stuff, set an out point, add to timeline and just let it keep going until you want to set the next in point and the next out point. Maybe a little bit longer. Let's press O again. There's still interesting stuff happening. Press O again. Just extend our out point here a little bit. So we can keep doing this until we've seen enough. A little bit more. This is a nice pen apparently. Just gonna keep going up, up, up. We're pressing O again, we're pressing O again, and we're pressing O one more time. This is good. And I press P on my keyboard. I added it to the timeline and it just keeps going. I press I on my keyboard. This is a longer clip, so I press L to increase the speed. We're just flying, we're just flying, we're just flying. I press L one more time. Now we're at four times the speed. And just to be safe, I'm going to start pressing O here, but it's still smooth flying forward, still smooth flying, flying forward. And here we, and here we had a change. So I may not want to include the change in direction. So I'm going to go until here, press O. Now I've paused it real quick by pressing K and then I just keep going 
until I see the change in movement. Here we are, I press I to set my endpoint. I watch the footage, see the birds fly by. I press O again to set an out point right before I have jerky camera movement. Basically throughout the entire process here, I don't even have to touch my mouse at all. All I'm doing is J-K-L-I-O-P, J-K-L-I-O-P. And that's the way I go through my entire drone footage until I have just a few couple of clips that are all the good parts that I then can neatly tuck away in a folder that I can access whenever I start working on a new drone project. Great, once you're done with cutting all your clips, so you can see out of these six clips that we had on our timeline here, we end up with quite a few more. So you want to go ahead and export these as individual clips so they can be neatly tucked away in a folder. So in order to export the clips, you wanna head over to your deliver page and you can set yourself up a custom profile, but that's for another video. The important thing to know is that you wanna click individual clips. If it's drone footage, just like this one, you probably don't wanna export any audio, even if it has audio. So just save yourself some space there. Also, if you're trying to submit your footage to stock footage websites, it's always good to have audio turned off. So you can head over to the file tab and you can specify how the individual clips are going to be named. One little tip here before you change any of the settings, just make sure to hit shift nine on your keyboard and double check your project settings. So we were working on our 30 frames per second clips here, just make sure that this is set to 30 frames per second. Otherwise you're gonna get a warning right before export. And then when you change your settings in here and you click save, you lose everything that you've done in here and you have to reconfigure it. So just keep that in mind. So head over to the file tab. I would just keep the source name just because then you can refer to each clip where they come from and then just put a unique file name and I just have them numbered at the end. So that just makes it a lot easier. Um, since we just have a couple of clips here, three digits is more than fine. You might even get away with just two. And that's all you need to do on the file tab. Audio is still turned off. And then on video, you basically don't have to change anything. But one thing I always make sure is that the data levels are set to full. And you can see here that the file name is just set to source name just because we're not exporting an individual project here. We're just exporting all of our individual clips. And then finally, we have the location. You don't have to do this right now. When you add it to the render queue, it will prompt you automatically to save your files. And then you want to navigate to your folder and probably put it close to where your footage comes from. You can see here I have all my clips organized like this so that I know these are all the raw files in here and here are all my cut video files and just have a folder for each of my cameras and then you just click that. It's added to the render queue. You can see out of our six clips we came out with nine, with nine usable short clips and then all we need to do is start rendering, wait for it to finish Great, and once your clips have finished rendering, you can simply close out DaVinci Resolve, go to your folder that you exported your clips to, and you can see that they retain the original file name, and then they simply get numbered. So out of the DJI 924 clip, we actually got two clips, so that's five and six, and then 27 has eight and nine, 38 has one and two and so forth. And there you have it. You quickly went through all your footage. You've exported all the individual files and now they're tucked away neatly in a folder. Next week, I'm gonna show you what to do with all these files and how to quickly put a drone video together just like the ones that you see come up every other week on my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you got anything out of this video, please hit the little thumbs up button. It really helps out with all this YouTube stuff. And if you really like this content, consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you next week.